Good evening, everyone. Good evening, I pray that tonight's uh, development uh, session will add something important to every life in Jesus' name. Amen. I will grow. I will grow. I'll be developed. I'll be developed. And God will energize everyone in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for this hour. Thank you for this moment. Thank you for your people. Brothers and sisters, leaders in the church, in different sections. We're asking, oh Lord, that today you impact us with new knowledge, more revelation, and strength in Jesus' name. Amen. Bless us so we can bless other people. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. God bless you. You can sit down. Tonight, we're coming to the epistle to the Hebrews. We've been in the epistle to the Hebrews in our search the scripture for a few weeks now. And tonight we're looking at the superiority of the believer's priesthood. The superiority of the believer's priesthood. There is no question, there is no doubt, there's no argument, there's no controversy concerning Christ's superiority and supremacy is greater is better is higher is mightier he is stronger he is nobler he is purer than angels than abraham than moses than aaron than all the priests than all the prophets than all the kings of the old covenant we're told in Hebrews chapter 1, reading from verse 4. In verse 4 it says, chapter 1, be made so much better, so much greater, so much higher than the angels, as he has by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. There's no question about that. Christ is higher, greater than the angels. We're coming to chapter 7. In chapter 7 of Hebrews, I'm reading from verse 22. By so much was Jesus made a sure, a surety of a better testament. And it truly were many priests because they were not suffered or permitted or allowed to continue by reason of days. But this man, referring to Christ, because the continuous ever has an unchangeable priesthood. Wherefore is able also to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him, seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them. And so you understand that Christ is greater, higher than kings and prophets. Chapter 6, chapter 8, we're looking at verse 6. But now, as he obtained a more excellent ministry, by how much also he is the mediator of a better covenant, which was established upon better promises. We come to chapter 9, verse 11. In chapter 9, verse 11, it says, But Christ, being come and high priest, of good things to come by a greater and more perfect tabernacle not made with hands that is to say not of this building and so as we look at all those verses of scripture in hebrews it tells us that christ is higher is greater is better than all angels than all men in the church outside the church in the world in any dispensation, Christ is greater. In fact, if you go back to chapter 1, Hebrews chapter 1, verse 1, God, who at sundry times, and in diverse manners spake unto, uh, spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets, as now in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he has appointed heir of all things, he inherits all things. And it says, by whom also he made the worlds, being who being the brightness of his glory 
and the express image of his person, upholding all things. You can't say that about any other person, about Moses, about Joshua, about Elijah, about Enoch, about Noah, anyone. He upholds all things by the word of his power. And it says he had by himself purged our sins. He now sat, he sat down on the right hand of majesty on high. Look at verse 6. And again, when he bringeth in the first begotten into the world, he says, let all the angels of God do what? Worship him. So, no question about his greatness and no controversy about the very fact that Jesus Christ is higher, greater, better, superior to anyone in the past, in the present, in the future, in the whole universe. The point we want to now understand is how superior is the Christian? How superior is the believer in his priesthood, in his position, in his appointment, in the assignment the Lord has given the believer? What revelation do we have concerning uh, the superiority of the believer's priesthood? The revelation we need is what concerns us right now about the superiority of the believer's priesthood. How does the believer compare, number one, with angels? How does the believer compare, number two, with Aaron? How does the believer compare, number three, with the priests? How does the believer compare, number four, with the prophets? How does the believer compare, number five, with kings in the past or in the present? How does the believer compare with past authorities? And number seven, how does the believer compare with the great men of the world? We need to understand this so that we're not just thinking about the greatness of Christ, who has he made us, what have we become? Look at uh, Hebrews chapter 1, we're reading from verse 13. Hebrews chapter 1 verse 13 but to which of the angels said he at any time, sit on my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool? Are they not, referring to the angels now, are they not all ministry spirits sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation? The serving us, those angels, and they are to serve all the heirs of salvation. In fact, as we come to First Peter chapter 1, First Peter chapter 1, we're reading from verse 10. The believer and the rest of the world, the believer and the prophets and the kings and the angels and the priesthood in the Levitical era. We're coming to First Peter chapter 1, reading from verse 10. Of which salvation the prophets have inquired and searched diligently, who prophesied of the grace that should come unto you. Unto who? I said unto who? They prophesied concerning the grace, concerning the salvation, concerning the mercy, Concerning the love of God coming to you, coming to me, coming to us, verse 11, searching what or what manner of time the Spirit of Christ, which was in them, did signify when it testified beforehand the sufferings of Christ and the glory that should follow, unto whom it was revealed that not unto themselves but unto us. All those glorious things they saw, all the great things they saw, and all the benefits of present day salvation that they saw, that it was not unto them, but unto us, they did minister these things, which are now reported unto you by them that have preached the gospel unto you, with the Holy Ghost sent down from heaven, which things, tell me, 
the angel's desire to look into so great so marvelous the things the lord has done for us and the things the lord has provided for us that even the angels desire to look into them chapter 2 of first peter and we're reading from verse 5 ye also as lively stones a built up a spiritual house and holy priesthood you see we are also priests and he says we're holy priesthood to offer spiritual sacrifices those priests of the old testament they offered normal animal sacrifices but now we are offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to god by jesus christ in verse 9 but she a chosen generation a royal priesthood this one is not the physical priesthood this is a priest con connected with kingship with royalty a royal priesthood and holy nation a peculiar people that you should show forth the praises of fame who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light and then we come to first corinthians chapter one first corinthians chapter one reading from verse 26 in first corinthians chapter one verse 26 paul the apostle led by the spirit of god says but you see your calling brethren are you included in this you see your calling brethren how that not many wise men after the flesh not many mighty not many noble are called what's the implication of that you are preferred above the many mighty people above the many noble people and above the many wise people so instead of uh, looking up to those uh, great men of the world the people of the world should be looking up to us we have something others do not have we possess something others do not possess and it says look at it we are more preferred than the wise men than the mighty men many of them than the noble men look at verse 27 but god has chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise they, and God has chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. We are preferred above the wise in the world and the mighty in the world. And then it says, and the base things of the world and the things that are despised as God chosen. He has chosen me. I said he has chosen me. It says, yea, and the things which are not to bring to naught the things that are. So tonight, we're looking at the superiority of the believer's priesthood. Three things we're looking at. Number one, our calling and compassion greater than Aaron's. Greater than that of Aaron. A calling, a compassion greater than Aaron's calling and compassion. Number two, our commission and confirmation better all round. As you consider the priesthood of the old, and you consider the priesthood of the believer today all round, in all ramifications, you will see that the Lord has given us a better, a higher, a greater commission and he has also provided a greater a better a higher confirmation all around point number two our commission and confirmation better all around then point number three our cleansing and character higher and abiding our cleansing and character higher and abiding number one our calling and compassion greater than errors we're coming to hebrews chapter 5 
and I read from verse 1. Hebrews chapter 5, reading from verse 1. For every high priest taken from among men is ordained for men in things pertaining to God that he may offer both gifts and sacrifices for sins. As you look at the verse, it says, priesthood is ordained of God, is appointed of God, and is appointed for the benefit of men. And it says in things pertaining to God, so that the priest will offer sacrifices that will be for the sins of the people. As you look at Aaron's priesthood, he offered animal sacrifice so as to atone for the sins of the people. As you look at the priesthood of today, our own priesthood, Christ has offered a final sacrifice, a great sacrifice, an acceptable sacrifice, the perfect sacrifice. And now we present that to the people. We're not offering any sacrifice of our own. We're not offering animal. We're not offering ourselves. We're presenting the offering of Jesus Christ. Because that's ordained of God. Because that's for all men. Because it's for their forgiveness. Because it's for their redemption. And that brings them to reconcile unto God. Look at verse 2. Who can have compassion on the ignorant the people of the world are ignorant. They are ignorant of God. They are ignorant of their own lives. They are ignorant of the future. They are ignorant of the way of salvation. They are ignorant of how to link up with the eternal God. They are ignorant on how to get to heaven. And the children of Israel were ignorant of the way of the Lord. How to reconcile with God. How to have forgiveness. How to have total uh, remedy for all their problems and the priest was restored so that he will have mercy on those ignorant people and show them the way of the lord and he has raised us up today he has raised us up so that we too will look at the ignorant and will reveal the might of god unto them and it says in that verse 2 i continue and on them that are out of the way that is the priest is to have compassion on those who are out of the way for that he himself is also compassed with infirmity he goes on to say and by reason hereof he ought as for the people so also for himself to offer for sins you begin to see the contrast between the past and the present in the past, the priest will first of all offer for himself because he was conscious of sin all the time. He wasn't really fully, completely, perfectly saved from sin. And so he came before the Lord. He didn't look at himself as somebody who was sinless because that had not been given to them. But then after that, he'll offer for the sins of the people. But today, we don't come to God confessing sin every day, confessing sin every week, and confessing personal sin every Sunday that Christ has paid for. And Christ has set all that, and he sets us free. And there's no condemnation now to those who are in Christ, but we're totally free from condemnation. And so, we're different from them. Look at verse 4. And no man taketh this honor unto himself, but he that is called of God as was Aaron. Let, let's pursue this and look at Aaron's calling and our calling. We're coming to Exodus chapter 28. Exodus chapter 28. We read from verse 12. It says in verse 12, And thou shalt put the two stones upon the shoulders of the effort for, for stones of memorial unto the children of Israel. And Aaron shall bear the names before, their names before the Lord upon his two shoulders for a memorial. You begin to understand, number one, that God ordained that he will be a priest, a high priest for the children of Israel, 
for the children of Israel. Uh, notice that just for that nation. How about us today? Is he just for one nation? No. Look at Matthew chapter 28. Matthew chapter 28. We're reading from verse 18. Matthew chapter 28, verse 18. Here we're told about our own ministry. The ministry of Aaron was limited to Israel. But our ministry is not limited to uh, one nation, Nigeria, one nation, Ghana. Our ministry is not limited to one nation uh, in Africa, not even limited to one continent, Africa. It's, look at this. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and on earth. That goes way beyond Aaron way beyond Aaron. If any plague broke out in the land of Israel, Moses will call Aaron and say very quickly, take your censer and put incense there and put fire there and make atonement for the children of Israel. If any plague broke out outside the border of Israel, those people were, were gone. Those people were dead. Those people will be destroyed by that plague because Aaron's ministry did not extend beyond the territory of um, Israel. But now, we are believers today and look at the ministry God has given us and look at the opportunity he has given us and look at the extent and look at the scope and look at the enlargement of that ministry that goes beyond one nation. And the Lord shows us here that all power has been given to him. All authority has been given to him. And because of that authority given to him, he passes that to us and now he tells us in verse 19, go ye therefore. He says, because all of authority is mine all power is mine and because it extends to the whole earth and the whole of heaven it says now go ye therefore and teach all nations how many nations are we to touch how many nations are we to influence how many nations are we to gather to the lord it says and teach all nations baptizing them in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy ghost teaching them to observe how many things all things whatsoever i have commanded you and lo i am with you i am with you always even unto the end of the world and somebody said amen in luke chapter 24 luke chapter 24 we're reading from verse 46 Luke chapter 24, we're looking at verse 46, and said unto them, Thus it is written, and thus it behoved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and remission of sin, repentance and forgiveness of sin, repentance and salvation from sin should be preached in his name among, tell me, all nations Aaron couldn't do that Aaron couldn't do that Aaron couldn't go beyond the territory of the nation of Israel but now he's called the believer he's cleansed the believer he's commissioned the believer and the believer is committed and the believer is consecrated to taking the good news the good news of the kingdom to take in, we're committed to take in the gospel of the kingdom to all nations so that they will have a conviction of their sin, so that they will have the confidence that Christ died for them and Christ is willing to forgive and Christ is willing to save them. And it says among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. Look at Romans chapter 16. Romans chapter 16, I'm reading from verse 25. Romans chapter 16, reading from verse 25. Here it says in verse 25, chapter 16 of Romans, it says, Now to him that is of power to establish you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery which was kept secret. It says, since the world began. Which was kept secret since the world began. What's the implication of that? Aaron did not know this. 
because it was kept secret from the beginning of the world. What's the implication of this? All the Levites and the total, the whole Levitical priesthood did not know this one. This good news that is to reach out to all nations and to all people until the end of the age. All the Levitical priesthood did not know this, but we know this. It's been given to us. It's been committed unto us. And we're to take this to the rest of the world. It had been kept secret since the uh, world began. But now, but now, it's made manifest by the scripture of the prophets according to the commandment of the everlasting God made known to how many nations? All nations to the obedience of faith. Now, let, let's come back to Exodus chapter 32 exodus chapter 32 we have seen the scope of aaron's priesthood we have seen the scope of our own priesthood we have seen the uh, lens and breast and we have seen the wheels we have seen everything uh, that uh, aaron was supposed to do and we have not seen uh, the expanded nature of our own ministry of the calling he has given us and of the compassion we ought to have to the rest of the world to many nations we're not going to look at the strength the steadfastness the ability of aaron and then the strength and the, and the ability of his priesthood we're coming to exodus chapter 32 i'm reading from verse 1 and when the people saw that Moses delayed to come down out of the mount, the people gathered themselves together unto Aaron and said unto him, Up, because gods which shall go before us, for as for this Moses, the man that brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we know not or what not, we can't tell what has become of him. And Aaron said unto them, Aaron said unto them, he didn't even try to talk to them, counsel them, discourage them. He didn't even try to honestly contend for the faith was delivered unto him. He didn't even try to say this backsliding, this is compromise, this is idol worship. In your mind, you are going back to Egypt already because you don't know what has happened to Moses. You are now telling me because God's that will go before us because we don't know what has happened to the man what's happening to you he didn't try to correct them we're higher we're greater we're stronger at least if somebody comes to you and he says you know i want to go and worship idol i want to backslide i want to compromise i want to do evil you will say you cannot do that i'm talking about you i said you will say you cannot do that you still put up for some verses of scripture and counsel and help and correct and encourage and pray with them and say, no, that will not happen. You will not go back to the world. You will not go back to evil. Aaron didn't even attempt to do anything like that. And Aaron said unto them in verse 2, break up the golden earrings which are in the ears of your wives and of your sons and of your daughters and bring them to me and all the people break off the golden earrings which were in their ears and brought them unto Aaron and he received them at their hands and fashioned each a graving tool with a graving tool after he had made each a molten cup and said this is what Aaron said will you say this these be thy God, so Israel, which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. As you look at Aaron, he didn't have backbone. He had straw for backbone. He didn't have real conviction. He couldn't stand. I'm looking at people here tonight who have stood your ground at the time of temptation. You have been steadfast. You'll continue to be steadfast. We're talking about believers today. Christ comes into our lives and Christ shows us the way out of sin, out of darkness, out of evil. And then temptation comes, we say no. 
Satan comes, we say no. Satan did not even come here. And these, these were just Israelites. These were not even Canaanites. These were not enemies. These were not strangers from outside Israel. These were Israelites. And these were younger, younger people because Aaron was 83 years of age when Moses was 80. And these people came and Aaron could not say, no, we have a better calling, a better compassion, a better understanding. And then it says, uh, look at this now in verse 5. Uh, and when Aaron saw it, he built an altar before it. And Aaron made proclamation and said, tomorrow is a feast unto the Lord. Look at how he's journeying idolatry with the Lord's name. And he arose up early on the morrow and offered bunch offerings and brought peace offerings. And uh, the people uh, sat down to eat and to drink and rose up to play. And the Lord said unto Moses, go, get thee down. For my people, tell me, thy people you know what Aaron did he made a whole nation of millions of people backslide think about that this high priest this Aaron made a whole nation of millions of people backslide and now God said for thy people which thou broughtest out of the land of Egypt have corrupted themselves they have turned aside quickly out of the way which i commanded them they have made them a molten cow and have worshipped it and have sacrificed thereunto and said these be thy gods o israel which have brought thee up out of the land of egypt and the lord said unto moses i have seen this people and behold, it's a stiff neck people. Now therefore, let me alone that my wrath may wax hot against them, and I will consume them, and I will make thee of thee a great nation. Now that's what Aaron did. Look at verse 33. Verse 33, and the Lord said unto Moses, Whosoever have sinned against me, tell me. I can't hear your voice. Read it to like, like you are preaching. Him will I blot out of my book. Come to Deuteronomy chapter 9. Deuteronomy chapter 9. I'm reading from verse 18. And see what Moses had to do. So that uh, Israel and Aaron will not be destroyed. Deuteronomy chapter 9. I'm reading from verse 18. It says in verse 18, And I fell down before the Lord, as at the first, forty days and forty nights. I did neither eat bread nor drink water, because of all, tell me, your sins which ye sinned in doing wickedly in the sight of the Lord to provoke him to anger. Aaron made the people backslide, but he didn't know how to bring them back to the Lord. Aaron made the people worship idols, and he didn't know how to stamp out that idol, destroy that idol, and remove that idol from their heart. He knew how to make them go down. He didn't know how to pick them up and lift them up. Aaron, and it says, for I was afraid of the anger uh, and the hot displeasure wherewith the Lord was wroth and angry, indignant against you to destroy you. But the Lord hearkened unto me at that time also. Verse 20. We're going to read this together. One, two, three, go. Praise the Lord. Aaron did not even know how to recover himself. How to restore himself. How to come back fully to the Lord. He didn't know the way. 
the way to say, okay, look at what I've done. I've made all these people go away from the Lord. And I've made them abandon the right way, the true way. And I know I have sinned. And I know I ought to come back to the Lord. He didn't even know how to make atonement for himself. How to recover himself. That was Aaron. Today, we know the promises of God. And if it so happens that somebody has, you know, come back into sin, and the Spirit of God brings the conviction, you know that you can kneel down right there. You know you can seek the face of God right there. You know that you can reconnect yourself, recover yourself, and you know you can be reconciled unto God. That Aaron did not even know. He would have perished and died in that idolatry. Why it not for Moses? Verse 20. And the Lord was very angry with Aaron to have destroyed him. And I prayed for Aaron also that same time. The same time. What happens today? What promise do we have today? And what possibilities do we have today? Are we in any way higher than Aaron? Come to Luke chapter 1. Luke chapter 1. I'm reading from verse 74. It says that he would grant unto us that we being delivered out of the hands of our enemies might serve him without fear. Serve him without fear. Somebody say, Amen. Amen. You know, Aaron was so timid and fearful, and he couldn't serve the Lord without fear. And he said, You know, the people, when Moses was asking him, Aaron, what has this, what have these people done to you that you have brought such a great sin on them? He said, You know, the mischief of the people. They'd be almost ready to stone me. You know how these people are? He was afraid of them. But today, the believer, as you come to the Lord, and you are saved. And Christ lives on the inside of you. And greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world whatever is coming you are going to overcome because today we are more than conquerors through jesus christ who loved us look at verse 4, 75 in holiness and righteousness before him how many days all the days of our lives hey, look at um, ephesians chapter 4 ephesians chapter 4 from verse 11. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 11. And he gives some apostles. And some prophets. And some evangelists. And some pastors and teachers. Verse 12. For the polluting of the saints. For the perverting of the saints. To make the saints backslide. Uh -uh, we're greater than Aaron. We have more promises than Aaron. We have more of the Spirit of God, Holy Ghost, than Aaron. And we have more stability and steadfastness than Aaron. He has raised us up now for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Till, till. No, we're not going to make the Israel of God backslide. We're not going to make the whole population the whole church, the whole local church, or the whole uh, denominational church, we're not going to make them backslide. We're going to keep on honestly contending for the faith once delivered unto the saints. He's giving us that church. He's giving us that commission. And thank God, we're up to it by the grace of God in Jesus' name. Till we all come in the unity of the faith of, on, and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. That's what we have. That's who we are. And we're going to stand our ground in Jesus' name. We're coming to Hebrews chapter 13. Hebrews chapter 13. We're reading from verse 12. Wherefore Jesus also, that he might sanctify the people, not defile the people, that he might sanctify the people with his own blood, suffered without the gate. Let us go forth therefore unto him without the camp, 
Berina is reproved. For here we have no continuing city, but we seek one to come. Verse 20, now, somebody say now. Now, now the God of peace that brought again from the dead, our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, verse 21, tell me, make you perfect. He will do it. I said he will do it. Make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you, that which is well pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. You see our calling is both gracious and glorious. The atonement we proclaim is not through the blood of animals, but through the sinless, spotless, blameless, perfect Christ. Uh, the, the blood of Christ, the Savior we present, and the Savior we represent, does not merely cover sin, he cleanses sin. He converts hearts. He cures the sinners of their sins. Our ministry in Christ, our ministry through Christ, our ministry for Christ leads sinners to salvation. Our ministry leads to assurance. Our ministry leads to eternal life. Our ministry leads to sanctification, purity, purging, holiness of heart. Our ministry leads to healing. Our ministry leads to deliverance. Our ministry leads to freedom and full redemption. Our ministry leads to the power, immersion, baptism in the Holy Ghost and the gifts of the Holy Spirit. In fact, our ministry leads to perfection. Our ministry leads to reproduction. Our ministry leads to triumphant entry into heaven. And how many people already in this ministry, from everything they have received, as we tell them about salvation, and tell them about holiness, and tell them about the Holy Ghost power, tell them victory over sin, how many people already, by the grace of God, they have left this earth, and they are now in heaven? We didn't make them backslide. We made them marching on, marching forward, until now they are heaven in the presence of the Almighty God. And when it comes to our turn, we are going to heaven. And so you understand the ministry we have today as you contrast that with the ministry of Aaron is higher and greater. We're coming to point number two. In point number two, we're looking at uh, Hebrews once again. We've read uh, Hebrews chapter five. I'm now reading Hebrews chapter six. Hebrews chapter 6, I'm reading from verse 7, For the earth which drinketh the rain that cometh out upon it, and bringeth forth herbs, meat uh, for them by whom it is dressed, receiveth blessing from God. Verse 9, But beloved, were persuaded better things of you, and things that accompany salvation, Though with those speak, we're persuaded of things that accompany salvation, things that follow after our salvation. Brothers and sisters have been saved, they're born again, they have salvation, and there are things in their lives that will follow, that will not come as a result of that salvation. Look at verse 18 of that chapter 6. That by two immutable things, in the which it was impossible for God to lie, we might have a strong consolation, who have fled for refuge to lay hold upon the hope that is set before us, which hope we have as an anchor of the soul. We have an anchor that keeps the soul steadfast, unmovable, and I pray you'll be unmovable in Jesus' name. But sure and steadfast, and which enters into that within the veil, whither the forerunner for us is entered. Even Jesus made an high priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. We're going to do something now as we look at point number two our commission and confirmation better all round we're looking at our commission and at his commission 
We're looking at the confirmation of our calling and the confirmation of the Levitical uh, priesthood, their calling. Uh, there will be two sections here. What you can do on your, on your paper, on your notes, is to, on the left-hand side, on the top, you write, the Levites priesthood. The Levites priesthood. And then on the right, that same line on the right, the believers priesthood. And then we we'll go one, two, three, four, and so that you see the difference. And you see which one is greater, which one is higher, which one is better, whether that other priesthood or your own priesthood. Number one, uh, the Levitical priesthood was only for the tribe of Levi. Only the tribe of Levi. That's why we've read already that the tribe of Judah was not mentioned. Tribe of Reuben was not mentioned. No matter how zealous, no matter uh, how by passionate anybody from any other tribe would be. And it says, I want to join the Levitical priesthood. It was limited to them. But in our own case, our priesthood is for all believers. You are counted in. You are acceptable before the Lord. You are not happy about that. Yeah. Revelation chapter 1. We're looking at verses 5 and 6. Revelation chapter 1, verses 5 and 6. For from G and from Jesus, who is the faithful witness and the false begotten of the dead and the prince of the kings of the earth. Look at this. Unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood and has made us, tell me, kings and priests unto God and his Father. To him the glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Chapter 5, verse 10. In chapter 5, verse 10, it says, And has made us unto our God kings and priests and we shall reign on the earth. Chapter 20, we're looking at verse 6. In chapter 20, verse 6, Blessed and holy is he that has part in the first resurrection. On such the second death has no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ, and shall reign with him a thousand years. And so, this priesthood is for all believers. Number two, it was the priesthood was promised to all Israel, but not confirmed. Promised to all Israel, but not confirmed. Exodus chapter 19. Exodus chapter 19, reading from verse 5. Exodus 19, verse 5. Now therefore, if ye will obey my voice indeed, if underline that little word if if he will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant then shall ye be a peculiar uh, treasure unto me above all people for all the earth is mine and ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and an holy nation they didn't fulfill the condition therefore they were not made priests all over the nation. Only the, Levi the Levites qualified. But in our own case now, it's promised and confirmed. Promised and confirmed to everyone. We're looking at First Peter chapter 2. First Peter chapter 2. We're reading from verse 5. In verse 5, ye also, as lively stones, are built up a spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God. Your service is acceptable to God. Your sacrifice is acceptable to God. Your consecration is acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. In verse 9, but she a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation a peculiar people that he should show forth shine forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his 
marvelous light. Number three, they were weak through sin consciousness. Weak through sin consciousness. In our own case, there is no controlling power of sin upon our lives anymore. You are free. I am free. In Romans chapter 8, reading from verse 1, there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus, what has it done? Has made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin, condemned sin in the flesh, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Uh, number four, already we mentioned the ministry was only within one nation. Uh, then in our own case, our ministry goes to all nations. The ministries just for one nation, but ours for all nations. Number five, uh, they could only be priests. They could not be kings at the same time. No Levite could be a king already. It's a priest, final, full stop. And if you were a king in Israel, you could not be a priest. Once you were a king, final. You cannot do any other thing and come into the priest's ministry. Look at Second Chronicles chapter 26. Second Chronicles chapter 26. You will see here that uh, the king ventured into uh, the priest ministry. Actually, uh, you know, got into uh, trouble. Chapter twenty-six, verse sixteen. And we, but when he was strong, his heart was lifted up to his destruction, for he transgressed against the Lord his God and went into the temple to burn incense. Upon the altar of incense, and Azariah the priest went in after him. And was seen first called priests of the Lord that were valiant men. And it was Jude Uzziah uh, the king, and said, It appertaineth not unto thee, Uzziah, to burn incense unto the Lord, but to the priests, the sons of Aaron, that are. A consecrated to burn incense, go out of the sanctuary, for thou hast trespassed, neither shall it be for thine honor. From the Lord God, then Uzziah was wroth, and had a censer in his hand to burn incense, and while he was wroth with the priest, leprosy, the leprosy even rose up in his forehead before the priest in the house of the Lord from beside the incense altar. And Azariah, the chief priest, and all the priests look upon him, and behold, he was leprous in his forehead, and they thrust him out from thence. Yea, he himself is dead also to go out because the Lord had smitten him. So in Israel, if you're a priest, you couldn't be king. If you're a king, you couldn't be priest. In our own case, we're both priest and king. You are both priest and king. You have uh, the opportunity, the privilege, the authority of both the king and the priest. We're coming back to Revelation again. Revelation again, chapter 1. Verses 5 and 6 are from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead, and the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins 
in his own blood and he has made us kings and priests unto God and to his father to him be glory and dominion forever and ever amen, amen. now the uh, priesthood of the Levites made nothing perfect their priesthood made nobody perfect they themselves were not perfect and their priesthood and their service made nothing perfect Hebrews chapter 7 verse 19 Hebrews chapter 7 verse 19 for the law made nothing perfect but the bringing in of a better hope did by the which were drawn nigh unto God but you know in our own case now our ministry is to bring perfection your ministry is to bring perfection Colossians chapter 1 verse 28 Colossians 1 verse 28 whom we preach warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus are you there we're going to make it personal where you see we there what do you put okay let's read now whom I preach warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom that I may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus do that again What a ministry you have. I say, what a ministry you have. You will do it. The Lord will help you. And the word of God will be mighty through your mouth in Jesus' name. Read that again and make it personal. One, two, three, go. The Lord confirm it in your ministry in Jesus' name. Amen. And you know, as we look at Aaron and the Levites, they were anointed with oil. Just oil. Anointed with oil. In Exodus chapter 29, Exodus 29, we're reading from verse 7. Exodus chapter 29, verse 7. Then shall they take the anointing oil and pour it upon his head and anoint him but in our own case as believers we are anointed with the same anointing the Holy Ghost that Jesus Christ had and you hear the amen there look at Acts chapter chapter 10 Verse 28, Acts chapter 10, we're reading from verse 38. It says in verse 38, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing, how many people? All that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. He was anointed of the Holy Ghost and with power. And then he said, He that believeth in me, the works I do, he shall do. And greater works than this shall he do, because I go to the Father. How can we do that? Because the same anointing of the Holy Ghost and the same power of the Holy Ghost upon him will be upon you. Amen. Look at chapter 1, Acts chapter 1 verse 8. But he shall receive power. Who is this talking about? If it has not happened, it will happen to you. If it, is happen, if it has happened, the Lord will multiply the power of the Holy Ghost upon you in Jesus' name. But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. 
it will happen. You know what happened to lepers in the Old Testament? The priest will take them and confine them and put them away, separate them. That's all the priest could do. But in our own case today, we do not confine the lepers. Look at what happens. We cleanse them. We kill them. They are healed in Jesus' name. Look at Matthew chapter 10, verse 8. Matthew chapter 10, we're reading from verse 8. The priesthood of the Old Testament, all they could do for the leper is cast them out, confine them, send them outside the can. But today, Matthew chapter 10, verse 8, heal the sick. If you have not started, you will start. The sick will be healed through you in Jesus' name. Heal the sick. Tell me what follows. Cast the lepers out. Confine the lepers. Separate the lepers. Cleanse the lepers. What follows there? You know, if any of those priests touched a dead body, what happens to them? They're unclean. Unclean. They couldn't touch. They couldn't transform. They couldn't trace the dead. But as we come to the New Testament, and we are believers now, it says, heal the sick, cast, uh, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead. What happens to those who have devils? I said, what happens to those who have devils? Cast out devils. Somebody that's going to do it. I said, somebody there is going to do it. You know, if you don't know what you have, you'll be afraid and trembling. You know? When there's somebody having evil spirit now, the Lord could not have commanded you to do something that you cannot do. Something you will never do. Something you'll never grow up to do. Something you will always fail about. No, you will not fail. Amen. You will do it. Amen. Don't dodge, I'm looking at you. I said you will do it. Amen. You will heal the sick. You will cleanse the lepers. Amen. You will raise the dead. Amen. And you will cast out devils in Jesus' name. Amen. How much are you going to pay before you start doing this? Freely ye have received and freely give. And now, finally, they, were, they had limited access to God. Priests of the Old Testament had limited access access to god we're looking at hebrews chapter 9 hebrews chapter 9 reading from verse 7 hebrews chapter 9 verse 7 limited access to god it says which was a figure for the time then present in which were offered both gifts and sacrifices that could not that's uh, verse 9 okay let me finish verse 9 it's good for you i said it's good for you which uh, that could not make him uh, that did uh, the service uh, perfect as pertaining uh, to the conscience. Now verse 7. But into the second went the high priest alone. How many times a year? Once every year. Not without blood. Which he offered for himself. For, uh, for the errors of the people. Verse 8. The Holy Ghost is signifying that the way into the holiest of all was not yet made manifest. While as the false temple was yet standing, they had limited access to God. How about today? Look at verse 24, chapter 9, verse 24. For Christ is not entered into the holy place made with hands, which at the figures of the true but into heaven itself now to appear in the presence of god in the presence of god he appears now in the presence of god how many times a year all the time 
all the time all the time christ is in the presence of the almighty god for me for you now because of that look at chapter 4 chapter 4 verse 16 chapter 4 verse 16 let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need chapter 10 verse 19 chapter 10 verse 19 it says in chapter 10 verse 19 having therefore brethren tell me boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of jesus by a new and living way which he has consecrated for us through the veil that is to say his flesh now the way is open it's open for you unlimited access to god now and so as you compare and contrast the levitical priesthood and the believer's priesthood today ours is higher ours is better all around it is better than their own we come to point number three now our cleansing and character higher and abiding our cleansing and our character higher and abiding come to chapter 7 hebrews chapter 7 verse 25 and verse 26 wherefore he is able to save them to the uttermost that come unto god by him anyone that comes to christ today he is able to save them till the final day and able to keep them saved seeing he ever leave it to make intercession for them for such an high priest became us who is holy harmless undefiled separate from sinners and made tell me higher than the heavens we're coming to second corinthians second corinthians chapter three in second corinthians chapter three reading from verse 15 but even unto this day when moses is read by those israelites the veil is upon their heart nevertheless when it shall turn to the lord the veil shall be taken away now the lord is that spirit and where the spirit of the lord is where the spirit of the lord is there's liberty there's liberation there's deliverance there's dominion there's freedom there's victory you have it in jesus name but we all how many of us my name is here i said my name is there your name is there in jesus name let all weakness depart let all timidity flee away and let all defilement be cleansed and let all the weakness of the knee and the weakness of your backbone let it be taken away in jesus name but we all with open face beholding as in a glass the glory of the lord are changed into the same image from glory to glory even as by the spirit of the lord that's much much higher than the levitical priesthood and that is yours that is mine that is mine you'll be more victorious today than yesterday in jesus name hebrews chapter 2 verse 9 hebrews chapter 2 verse 9 but we'll see jesus who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death crowned with glory and with honor that he by the grace of god should taste death for every man the death and penalty you should have borne christ as bondage that eternal death you will not die Amen. and this premature death you will not die Amen. spiritual death you will not die Amen. 
he has been your substitute for it became him for whom are all things and by whom are all things in bringing many sons unto glory you are coming to that glory to make the captain of their salvation perfect through suffering for both he that sanctifies and they who are sanctified are all of one for which cause is not ashamed to call them brethren look at uh, chapter 4 there from verse 14 seeing then uh, that we have a great high priest which is passed into the heavens jesus the son of god let us hold fast our profession for we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with our with the feeling of our infirmities but it was in all points tempted like as we are yet without sin let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy you're obtaining mercy today yeah. more mercy today yeah. higher mercy today and you will find grace to help in time of need chapter 8 verse 6 chapter 8 verse 6 but now he has obtained a more excellent ministry by how much also he is the mediator of a better covenant which was established upon better promises verse 10 for this is the covenant that i will make with the house of israel after those days says the lord i will put my laws in their mind and write them in their heart and i will be to them a god and they shall be to me a people give me a good amen, amen. chapter 9 verse 11 for christ being come and i priest of good things to come by a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands. That is to say, not of this building, neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood, he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained what kind of redemption? What kind of redemption do you have? I mean the what you possess right there eternal redemption for us for if the blood of bulls and goats and the ashes of an ephah sprinkling the unclean sanctified to the purifying of the flesh how much more shall the blood of christ who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to god purge 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 your conscience from dead works to serve the living god you will serve god your service will not be hindered in jesus name look at chapter 12 verses 1 and 2 wherefore seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses let us lay aside every weight they're not be a part of your life again and the sin which does so easily beset us and let us run with patience the race that is set before us looking unto jesus the author and the finisher of our faith the author and the finisher of your faith the author and the finisher of our faith who for the joy that was uh, set before him endured the cross despising the shame and he sat down at the right hand of the throne of god verse 14 follow peace with all men now that is easy follow peace with all men now that is possible follow peace with all men from the position where we are from the provision he has made for us and from the priesthood he has given us this one is straightforward and this is the normal thing now this is going to be your normal life it will be your regular life it will be your life above every situation in jesus name because now you go out you are going to reign as a king 
and you are going to rule as a king for no peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the lord our god is able is able to save able to save you to the uttermost you will not backslide you will not fall it's able to save you better than the old covenant could save anyone is able to liberate you able to keep you from sinning he breaks the power of sin the passion and the pride he cancels that anger and temper he cancels that indifference and indolence he cancels that evil desire and worldly ambition he erases and washes all that away every besetting sin you'll overcome inbred sin you will overcome he is able to save you to the uttermost able to sanctify you to the ultimate and is able to sustain and strengthen you for the uppermost we're looking at jude jude chapter one only one chapter jude chapter one verse 24 jude chapter one verse 24 now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise god our savior be glory and majesty and dominion and power both now and ever before you pray make it personal now unto him that is able to keep me from falling and to present me faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy god is going to be joyful over you to the only wise god my savior be glory and majesty dominion and power both now and forever and the whole church said rise up and tell the lord rise up and tell the lord he can cleanse you he can wash you he can purge you he can purify you and he will make you productive he will make you successful he will make you victorious because he's able to keep he's able to keep able to keep us from falling able to keep us victorious able to keep us victorious able to keep you having dominion he will do it he will do it he will do it we have a greater high priest and the greater priesthood we have a better priesthood we have a higher priesthood and we have what the lord himself has provided look at calvary look at the cross look at his blood and look at the provision look at what he's going to do and look at what he has done already and look at the provision for your life tell the lord tell the lord tell the lord and appropriate it for yourself appropriate it for yourself appropriate it for yourself and say lord here am i here am i he will cleanse you he will wash you he will purge you he'll purify you he will lift you up he'll give you this priesthood this priesthood that he has provided through the blood of the covenant of the cross of calvary tell him tell him that you believe that higher priesthood is for you that greater priesthood is for you and that better priesthood is for you it cleanses the heart it purges the heart and it makes us what we ought to be and who we ought to be and is able and is able and is able and is able able to cleanse able to kill able to purge able to preserve able to destroy even inbred sin able 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 is able able to save them to the uttermost that come unto god by him by him all the weakness present unto the lord all the infirmity present unto the lord all the shaking present unto the lord and all the things that have brought you down before all that besetting sin no more no more because from today there's greater victory and there's a higher victory is able to save you to the uttermost 
and is able to sanctify you to the utmost and is able to strengthen you and sustain you to the uppermost and for the calling he has given you today he will do it he will do it call upon the lord and tell the lord oh lord here am i oh lord here am i oh lord here am i to the only wise god the mighty god and the great god who is able to keep you from falling you'll not fall back into those seas anymore because jesus christ the author and the finisher of our faith is right there by your side why don't you come boldly to the throne of grace come boldly to the throne of grace and he will grant you all the mercy all the help all the compassion all the power he will anoint you afresh anoint you afresh with the oil of the holy ghost there'll be power authority anointing in your life and it makes you more than a conqueror more than a conqueror through him who has loved us through him who has loved us and he has brought us out of our weakness into his glory out of our weakness into his marvelous light and you're now the priesthood the new priesthood new testament priesthood he has called you tell the lord tell the lord here are my lord shine through me shine forth through me and do that mighty sin through me he will he will he brings you a brighter into a more glorious into a greater ministry let him confirm it in your life he will do it his blood washes whiter than snow his blood cleanses whiter than snow and because he does that you can stand some firm some courageous in the will of the lord in the word of the lord he will do it he'll do it you must be stronger today than you were before higher today than you were before better today than you were before you must be higher greater today than you were before the blood of the lamb and the spirit of the lord will confirm it and do it in your life